Hello everybody and welcome to SQL on the Edge. This is episode 7 and we're going to talk about Azure Data Factory. My name is Warren Chavez. I'm a SQL Server MCM Microsoft Data Platform MVP and I work at Pythian. Make sure you visit us at pythian.com. So the topic for today is going to be Azure Data Factory. This is a new service that came out for uh, Microsoft Azure and it is basically an integration tool that is cloud-based and it is delivered as platform as a service. So you don't have to install any bits, you don't have to manage any type of uh, uh, software or hardware underneath the actual pi uh, platform. All you have to do is uh, set up your data sources and code your pipeline and that's it. Azure gets ready of um, the rest. So think of it if you're used to being a SQL Server DBA think of it more or less as having like SSIS in the cloud so you can uh, pull data extract it from many different sources you can transform it uh, as well it includes a .NET API how uh, just how we can uh, plug in .NET inside SSIS as well and then you can deliver it to all types of different targets like Azure SQL database or an actual SQL Server a relational database or uh, something like uh, just Azure storage or a file system and also it supports hybrid uh, setup so hybrid pipelines where we're moving data from on-premises to the cloud by the means of a gateway so you install a gateway agent on the machine that you have let's say your Oracle on-premises or your SQL server on-premises a machine that can see those uh, those servers and that that machine can act as a middleman between your on-premises machines and the cloud and uh, you just have to point Azure Data Factory into that agent and it'll take care of doing the hybrid movement of data um, from on-premises to the cloud or vice versa. So in order to see how this is set up and how it works, let's jump into the demo. I'm going to set up a quick pipeline of moving data from uh, Azure Blob Storage into an Azure SQL database. Okay, I'm connected right now to the Azure portal and the first thing I want to show you is where to find data factories. So if you go to browse, just go, this is ordered alphabetically. All the resources are ordered alphabetically. So let's just go straight into down to the D and the first one you'll find right there is data factories. So I'm going to click on that one and then you'll be able to see I have this data factory called Edge Demo. Um, and I put it in the West US region. It's not uh, available in all regions, data factories. Right now it's only West US and North Europe, so the closest to me would be uh, West US. So I'm going to click here. Now here we can see there's three basic components for a data factory. Number one is linked services, and those are going to be the type of uh, either files or tables, systems that will provide either the input or will be the output for a pipeline. So that's the linked services. After you define linked services, then you can define data sets over those linked services. And finally, you can create a pipeline to connect them. So I'm going to show you, for example, if I go to linked services, then we can see I have two different uh, data stores already defined. Uh, one is called Music Data Source. It's a demo database that I use. It's on Azure SQL database. And then another one called West Cloud Storage, which is my Azure storage account that I have in the West US region. Okay. As well, if you want to create a new data store, you can click on this and then it'll take you over um, here this panel and you can select the different types of data stores that are available. We can see here there's Azure Storage, SQL Database, SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres, MySQL, Teradata, DB2, Sybase, um, file system based and this is just here in the portal um, the actual JSON that you can write to define data stores has uh, more sources as well that you can write so let me go back here now that we saw the linked services and let's go into step number two which is data sets so you guys can see I have two different data sets designed. One is artist SQL table. So you can probably tell that's a table that's coming from the SQL database and artist table from blob. So that is a table that I defined on top of a flat file inside blob storage. So let's go into each one of these. And then when you go into them, you can see, for example, if there's already been some data processed, you see here, slice start time, slice end time, and it'll tell you what happened. Now there's another slice because uh, um, this particular um, 
data set is being used on a daily pipeline. So there's another slice here for today that's going to be pending execution until the end of today. So that'll give you um, the information for what is going on with that particular data set. Now you can also go here into the table source. Okay, so now we can see the JSON that defines a data set. So we can see the name, there's a different structure of the table, and then there's some different um, properties that link it back to the data source. For example, here, link service name, it links it to that music data source that I created, and the table that I want to insert the data into, which is called artist rates inside the Azure SQL database, and the availability of this data set, which is basically I say, well, I want to load it up uh, once a day here. Okay, so that's sort of what it looks like. All these are defined through different JSON structures. So if I go to the blob one, for example, you guys can see as well, it's got the name here, it's got the structure that is reading from the flat file, um, the name of my uh, uh, linked uh, source, which is that uh, West Cloud Storage link source that I created, uh, the path, and then the text format. And, uh, you know, for example, that is a CSV file, so I have to specify column delimiter is the, col the common there. So that's pretty much how it works. You, If you can't define something on uh, the portal, you can always define it through the JSON. So let me close this back. And that will be link uh, step number two is the actual data sets. And then finally, we can also go into uh, see what the pipelines look like. So here we can go see the source of the pipeline. I was, well, this is also JSON. So it's got a description and then it tells the activities, the type of activity, in this case is a copy. And we want to copy from uh, the source, which is the blob, into a sync, which is the SQL sync. And the input is that blob I have artist table. The output is this artist SQL table. And then we have some policies here, timeout and the scheduling once a day in this case, and a name and a description. And that's uh, after that, you deploy this and it gets deployed as one of the pipelines inside your Azure data factory. So let me go back here. And finally, I just want to show you um, the diagram that you can get here as well. So this is very, very simple um, demo, obviously, that we're just doing, you know, reading the blob file, then we're passing it through that demo pipeline that only has that one copy activity. And then from that, we're just putting it into an Azure SQL database uh, sync. Um, so diagramming right now is basically just to move around objects and if you needed to, like, document it. You don't really have... Um, capabilities to edit any of this stuff right now. So if you go from it, it'll take you to uh, the other um, window or blade that gives you more details on that particular uh, operation, but it doesn't allow you to edit them on the spot, kind of like how you would do with, let's say, SSIS, at least not right now. So for now, the diagram is more of a um, visualization kind of aid or a navigation aid is not really an editing aid at least not yet okay and then last if you want to see how um, a run uh, went for your um, pipeline then the easiest way to do it is just to go to a data set and then for example I can pick my SQL table and then I can see the data slices And for example, yeah, I can see, you know, how how my uh, data slice from last night went, you know, the slice start time, the slice end time. Um, it started, for example, at uh, midnight um, today, and then it took 79 seconds to load whatever I had on that flat file into my Azure SQL database. And that's it. Um, if I wanted to do it the other way around, this was for the sync. So if I wanted to check, I can also check it from the blob in case, for example, that we were reading from one uh, source and then putting it in many different destinations. Then you could see, for example, if um, the source was OK, but any specific destination, for example, took longer or less and stuff like that. So 
here we can see again it succeeded it took 41 seconds to read it off uh, this midnight to read off my flat file here so in general very interesting service it's still very early at uh, very early stage so not a lot of stuff you can do uh, yet on the diagram view specifically if you don't mind working with the JSON then it's a lot easier but we'll have to see how this service evolves uh, this and next uh, 2016 and hopefully as well more region availability to be creating these pipelines okay All right, so I hope you got a good overview of the current state of Azure Data Factory and more or less how the data model and the different steps work for you to create a pipeline. So if you guys remember, I had two different data sources. You first have to define these. Um, they're called linked sources or linked systems on Azure Data Factory. So th this can be the input and the output that receives uh, from the data on the pipeline. In my case, we had an Azure Blob storage input and then we put an Azure SQL database output. But like we saw, it supports all different types of um, of uh, systems that can be inputs and systems that can be outputs like different relational databases document DB uh, file storage HDFS and so on um, second step once we have defined our sources and targets we can create data sets on them so that's like a logical view of what you're gonna be taking or what you're gonna be putting into your Azure um, data factory uh, linked source so in this case again we mapped a table over the flat file of that we had on the blob storage and then we mapped the table as well to the actual relational table that we had in Azure SQL database and once you have uh, these logical uh, the data sets defined then we can create the pipeline and we can do different operations like copy on data or we can do more complex transformations or we can route it through something like Azure ML and then route it back through the pipeline and um, Last thing to operationalize your actual pipelines, you can set up custom schedules or you can just let Azure Data Factory deal with it by just setting up some frequency and intervals. For example, you can use uh, minutes, hours, days, and then you can say, for example, check if there's a new slice of data once every day or twice every day, or check if there's a new slice of data once uh, every hour, and Azure Data Factory will uh, take care of moving that data from your uh, inputs into doing the transformation transformation and to your outputs and like I said you don't have to manage any of the software all you have to do is go in and create the pipelines all right well again thanks for watching miss stay tuned and we'll see you soon thank you